We've got the first question. Right over here, Steve. Congratulations on the win. Fantastic performance. Not many people have been able to take a Francis Ngannou punch and really talk about the tale later on that night. So what was it like? Did it live up to the hype that everybody was giving it? Oh, it definitely is hard. I mean, there's no question. It's a heavy division. Do you want to get by, do you want to get hit by him? No, that's why I went. Exactly. It sucked. I mean, look at my eye. One punch, you know. But uh, that was my own fault. I put myself in the lane. But you know, listen, I hit him a lot more than he hit me. And that's why I still have the belt. It was kind of a weird situation. You're the champion. You defended the title twice. Yeah, you were the underdog. It was the Francis Ngannou show. It seemed like in a lot of people's eyes, you know, now that you won the title or, or retained the title, had the performance you had tonight, dominated Francis Ngannou tonight. You're about to become a dad. I mean, what is that all like? I mean, it's got to feel incredible right now, right? It was a steep base show tonight. It wasn't about him. It was about me, because I'm the champ. I broke the record. I'm the best. You seem a little fired up. Um, one thing that a lot of people noticed was that you took the title from Dana and you handed it to the coach and mm -hmm. had him wrap it around your waist. Can you explain the thought process there? My dude. That dude respects me. I respect him. End of story. Hey, Jim. Congratulations on the performance. Uh, you've spoken several times in the past and recently in Media Day about enjoying the simplicity of your life and going back to, to your home and to your lawn. And as the gentleman said, you're going to be a dad soon. You can you just talk about, uh, obviously, it's an exciting moment in your, in your life, but the fact that you're going to become a dad and going back just to your life after this. Oh, yeah. I hope it snowed a lot. Let me use that snow plow. I'm so pumped. I keep, I just got, man, so I've been thinking about it all week. I was really pissed last time I did it because my finger got jammed in the shoot. It kept shooting everywhere. But, uh, you know, then that, and I got a bunch of my buddies coming over the next couple of weeks, start moving stuff around and get the baby room set up. And, you know, and then going to have cameras everywhere because I'm a psycho. So no one touches my daughter and comes in, tries to rob my house, you know. And even though I'm the best man on the planet, you know, I just, I'm a weirdo. So. Great job tonight. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks. Steve Bay. Right here. Okay. We'll talk sometime about what happens when you run over the, the Sunday newspaper with the snowblower, because that's not fun. Oh. You'll, you'll do it eventually. Uh, yeah, uh, well, I don't get the paper. Oh, I go online. Geez. I'm joking. I'm sorry, joking. plain dealer. I'm people. joking. I'm, I'm a dick. I'm sorry. I'm joking. Sorry. Hey, uh, was the game plan, did you feel like the game plan going into this was that, you know what, I'm going to push him against the fence and I'm going to take him down as often as I need to? Was that? Yeah, I'm saying, you know, never, he's never been there. Why not? Right? I mean, I, I felt like I struck him. You know what I mean? He caught me in the first round a couple of times, but after that, you know, I could see I took the will out of him and that's what I do. You know, I will take the will out of you. I feel like a lot of people thought, you know what, uh, the way this we've seen this guy hit, he, he could hit anything and, and put put the lights out. But we know you could put people's lights out, too. Yeah. But did you feel like, as long as you got past the first round, that this thing for sure was yours for the taking? Listen, man, I got the party? fighting spirit, bro. It's going to take a lot more to take me out. You Ford Escort, Ford F-150, I don't really care. I'm going to keep coming. All right? I mean, he's a tough dude. There's no question. He's got a great, great career out of him. He's a tough dude. But uh, listen, man, I got that fighting spirit. I ain't going to stop. I'm the daily grind. I know you want to enjoy this, obviously, and probably take a little bit of time off, but do you have anybody that's on your radar for, for what comes next? Yeah, you know, when my daughter's born and she's like 18, starts dating. I mean, every dude that she can start talking to, I'm going to smash them. You ever watch Bad Boys? <laughs> Bring all my boys over, be a good time. And I will ask you this, and, and as I asked DC earlier, I'm not trying to stir anything up. Dana did say on the post-fight show, you and DC is a fight that he would love to see. Uh, it, it, that may be the fan in him talking, but but is that something you would ever entertain? Oh, listen, yeah, man. I'm like right now, dude, I don't care. Like I just got done with a fight like 45 minutes ago or an hour ago, whatever it was. 25 hard minutes with a tough dude. I don't really care what's going on right now. I just want to go home, see my dogs, hang out my wife. She's she's put up with enough with me, you know. She's an amazing woman. I'm very lucky to have her, and uh, I just want to go home, hang out with her, and just just relax. And I'm not worried about that. Let me, let me heal up. It sucks getting old, man. Thanks. Hey, Steepy. How you doing? Oh, Mark. <laughs> Congratulations. Thanks, buddy. Um, you had my dude. <laughs> you had downplayed um, for months and this week about the record. and But now that you've done it, you've accomplished it, can you kind of reveal to us did it, how much did it mean to you? Or, or were, you, were you sincere in... That they really, the record doesn't really mean, mean that much to you. Well, now it means something to me. You know, I beat the guy you know, that everyone thought I couldn't beat. So it made it much that much sweeter. This guy's a phenom. He's one in a million, blah, blah, blah. Well, guess what? He lost. He lost to a Midwest boy that's 40 pounds lighter than him. And I'm the greatest heavyweight. I defended it three times. No one's ever done that. Right. Did that kind of feel like uh, 
going back to your high school days at East Lake North and Cleveland State today uh, when you were a standout wrestler, I mean, it almost felt like a wrestling match for you out there today. Yeah, I mean, his leg was there. I'm going to take him down. Hell yeah. Hey, little big dude. You want to get by him? <laughs> I don't. I mean, look what happened to my eye. He got me a good shot. That sucked. But, uh, no, man, I'm going to go out there and just do what I do. And I got, saw his leg, take him down, and, you know, he didn't like it, and he couldn't get up. It was hard for him to get up, and I just wore, wore him down, kept working. And that was the game plan. If I got him down, do it, you know. Did so you put feel in deep you, water. Did you feel you were going to have a – you had a – it looked like you had a really enormous advantage when you were going for the single leg. Did you feel, like, putting in preparation that – this was going to be a huge advantage for you? Uh, no, because you know, I, there were so many like unanswered questions about him. You know, he's a big, strong dude, man. You see what he does? I mean, he uh, he's still, still strong in the fourth round. You know, he's gassed out. He's still a tight, strong boy. You know, and just gotta go out there and keep working. And uh, you know, I, you never know what to expect, man. It's mixed, mixed martial arts, man. It's as real as it gets. You never know. You know, you could be winning the whole fight and last minute, dude, catch you with a flying hook, you're tired, boom, you're out. You just yeah. don't know. He said that uh, he he felt he made a big mistake. He, he said he came at you too hard, too early, and by the third round, he was gassed. Did you sense that? I felt you know, that in the first round. That you, you felt he was coming after you really hard. Uh, I feel like he couldn't put me right in that first round. I, that's how I can see it. His will is dwindling away. You know, it was a tough dude. There's no question. He's really good, but I felt his will dwindling away. You know, I, I could see in his face. He didn't. He couldn't move. I was still there. He moved everything that he had, you know, and definitely it hurt. There's no question, you know. And it's a big dude, I and mean, what do you do? I was, you know, it's like almost like that Rocky versus uh, Drago, you know. <laughs> <laughs> He's just getting beat up in the first round, you know, a couple of rounds. But listen, man, he was tough, and uh, you know, and it, it wouldn't matter what he did. If you even stayed back too, I still would have pushed the pace on him, and still, I still got him tired. And by the way, congratulations! I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know you were having a, uh, a baby girl. Congrats! Yes. Right? Oh, did you well, guys come up with, with the name yet, or no? Uh, yeah, I think we're gonna go with maybe Dylan, <laughs> Marie, or Isabella. Nice. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. I appreciate that. Hey, Stipe. Over here. Oh. Congrats. What's up? Uh, third straight title defense, fourth title fight. But does this one feel a little sweeter considering everything that went into it? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. What do you think? I think it does. I think so too, man. It was, what the hell? I mean, it went shit on me, dude. I was uh, like, oh my God, you're getting knocked down the first round. Oh my God, he's unbelievable. Well, guess what? That's still mine. That ain't going nowhere. Just want to go back to your uh, previous answer about taking the belt and giving it to your coach. You said, that guy respects me. So I'll ask you flat out, do you feel like Dana White doesn't respect you? I don't know. I don't really care. Where's my coach at? Those dudes right there? My family. They all respect me. I respect them. They come with me. We go to war. No matter what happens, win, lose, or draw, that's my family. We all respect each other. No matter what the situation is. At some point, whenever you're ready to come back, do you want to try to repair what kind of, like, you know, start to get promoted the way you think you should be promoted? No, man, I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. If it ain't fixed, don't broke it. Don't, whatever. I can't, I'm tired right now. Sorry. Okay. It's like three in the morning. I just want to go home. Um, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Right? I, I don't really care. I, honestly, I got so much on the plate right now. I'm so happy. You know, my beautiful wife has, 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 her, has her child. I'm very lucky. You know, I got my coaches here. They're amazing. I, listen, man, I'm not worried about repairing anything i don't know like apparently i called him out when he told me he said he was talking about we were butting heads i called him out on that that's pretty funny he's like what are you talking about i don't know how'd that go no he denied it last thing um you said a couple times you even tweeted by the way is that you tweeting because it was like right after the fight no, no you have tweet, another guy tweeting. tweeting no it's my gym oh it is all right yeah, come on dude it's it's very well done yeah um, he's very smart <laughs> So there's the quote, I'm the greatest of all time. Yeah. You've said it a couple times. You didn't want to say it before. No, yeah. Is it because you just wanted to wait till the fight was over? Like, you truly believe that you're the greatest of all time? Fuck yeah, I do. No one's ever defended it three times. I've done it. In, I've, I've, I had the row, like, killer's row of fighters to get to it. I had a hard path to get to the title. And I had a hard path to defend the title. I had top dudes, you know. I had to fight Arlowski. I had to fight Verdum in Brazil on 45,000 people. I mean, crazy. Next guy. Overeem. Killer, K1 champ, hits like a ton of bricks. Next guy, JDS, who I lost to. Now I got, I got a guy that's a phenom. Next, I mean, t I mean, nothing's ever easy. I know it's funny ain't easy, but I never had an easy road. Everything was hard. That's why I love being from Cleveland because nothing's I was ever given. It's earned. Congrats. Congrats on the win, right here. Thank you. 
curious, you talked about your coach and that game plan. Francis even talked about how your game plan, game plan was just better than his. Can you kind of talk about what went into that? I mean, I know you have so much respect for your coaching staff, but it did seem like not only your heart and your intelligence in the ring, in the cage, but in terms of that game plan that you guys were just a little better prepared. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty much just me doing all the game planning. They just sit there and do what I want. And I'm talking <laughs> No, yeah, they, I mean, the minute the fights gets, you know, and now it's third right on it. They, they're calling me, all right, that's what we're going to do. And so for weeks, we, we, we go over. I don't even watch film yet. I just, for by six, seven weeks, I'll just train, go over, go over, go over. They only go on, work on his weaknesses, work on his strengths. And then about two weeks out, we'll start watching film and I see what I'm doing right, which actually helps me a lot, actually. I can see what I'm doing, why I'm doing it. It fair to say that you thought you had the better game plan as well? Oh, 100%. I mean, when, I hope so. I mean, I'm a heavyweight <laughs> champ. And my last question, thank you again. Would you ever consider something later in 2018 with uh, just such a big name, though he probably doesn't deserve a title match, with Brock Lesnar? So many eyeballs would be on that fight. Yeah, man. Like, again, oh, man, you guys don't ever stop with these. Can I just go home and relax a little bit? Like, God damn. Um, no, I mean, yeah, I'll fight anyone, dude. I just want to go home and take it, like, just relax. Just watch some football. Enjoy. Drink a beer. Drink a Modelo. Call it a day. That's it. Come on. I'm just sorry. I get yeah. right there. Last question. Okay. Uh, two questions. Steve, hey. Um, one question. You said one. I'm joking. Uh, <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. You guys made your one. Um, first of all, the cr you know, outside of Cleveland, we saw what, the, what an amazing reaction you had from the, the fans in Cleveland. But tonight, it was a very pro Steve Miocic crowd in there. Could you hear them throughout the fight? Oh, yeah. Boston's awesome, man. It's a funny city, dude. Love Boston. I finally got to hang out here and enjoy it. And it's a great city. I got to, you know, <clears throat> train at Walter's gym with that, that amazing man right there. I mean, that boxing gym is phenomenal. His boy won tonight, too, which is amazing. Um, and, uh, you know, he's just yeah, just a good dude. And, and just meeting the people and the food. Oh, the food. Oh, thank God I'm a heavyweight. Thank God I'm a heavyweight. Because I ate so much good food. But, uh, but yeah, I love this city. It was a great city. Amazing. And my final question, just going back to what I asked you earlier on in the week. Would you like your next fight to be back in Cleveland? I don't know. We'll figure it out, man. You know, right now, like I said, just want to go home, enjoy myself. I, know I don't really give... Well, I'm like an onion. You got to pay me back later at a time, bro. Uh, but I'm just going to go home, relax, and just enjoy myself, enjoy my wife. You know, she's put up with me for a lot, a lot of a couple weeks. You know, I'm like a raging hormonal teenager during fight camp, so it's her time to shine. Congratulations again. Thanks. Thanks, guys.